uh, I always have planned ahead of time of, you know, what I'm going to teach, what I'm going to talk about. But I'm also one, um, and, and, and my wife knows I am very sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And I, I, I you know, I, I do my absolute best to be 100% obedient and what it is he wants me to discuss. And um, tonight we were going to talk about one thing, but clearly with everything going on with Israel, um, it even happened yesterday morning. Um, yesterday morning, I had another teaching plan, but uh, you know, I, the Holy Spirit was leading me to really just pray, uh, leading the entire call. It wasn't just me praying. It was everybody who was on the call. We were all praying for Israel. We were all praying that God would 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 give them the victory because we know that he is the victory and he already has the victory and that God would vindicate on behalf of Israel. And we also pray for our brothers and sisters uh, who are being persecuted in other nations such as China, North Korea, um, Nigeria. Uh, so we really went in on that. We really were praying in that area. But tonight, um, tonight, we are going to look at Matthew chapter 24, uh, verses 1 through 4. Again, that is Matthew, I'm sorry, not verses 1 through 4, uh, verses 1 through 14 and 30, and I, you know, you all saw it on the slide already, it was 36 through 44. So we are looking at Matthew chapter 24, verses 1 through 14 and 36 through 44. So some of you um, are aware that this is when Jesus talks about the signs of the times and the end of the age. And the reason I wanted to bring this up tonight, the reason why um, I felt it was necessary to talk about this tonight is because um, as, as believers, as followers of Christ, we, you know, we see on Facebook, everybody says, oh, Jesus is going to come back tomorrow. Oh, Jesus is going to come back at any point in time now. Oh, look at everything that's going on in Israel. Oh, you must be ready. Oh, pay attention. Oh, look, 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 look. And we need to be mature in our response. We need to ensure that we are understanding scripture in its context and that we have sound doctrine that we are looking at. So we are going to be talking about everything that is going on today. Does it mean the rapture is going to happen tomorrow? No, nobody knows the day nor the hour. Um, nobody knows when Jesus' return is going to be. And everything that we're seeing right now, I'm just going to be honest with you all, with the with, with the war that is going on um, within Israel, between Israel and Gaza right now and Palestine, um, with the uh, earthquakes that have taken place in Iran, um, everything that has taken place uh it's really all a sign of the beginning of sorrows. Jesus said the end will, will eventually come. But right now, what we're seeing is the beginning of sorrows. And I'm going to prove that to you all tonight. I'm going to show you all scripture. and We're going to talk about this in greater detail. So I pray that everyone is ready for tonight's teaching. Um, like I said, we're just really going to look at this in its context, this scripture. Okay. So Matthew chapter 24, verse one, starting at verse one. Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. See, the disciples were amazed at the temple. You know, all of us know about how beautiful the temple was, you know, how we, we read in the Bible how great Solomon's temple was. But we also know that there was another temple that was built. Um, and I believe this temple was in the time of Ezra, but forgive me if I may be wrong there. But there was another temple that was built and that temple was uh, eventually destroyed. Um, and now we're in a generation where Israel is currently working on. They already have the preparations to build a third temple. But at this time of this temple, this was a grand temple. This was a marvelous temple that had been built. This was the second temple that had been built. And the disciples are just showing Jesus the buildings. I'm pretty sure they're looking at the columns and they're saying, Lord, look at how marvelous this is. Oh, Lord, look at how beautiful this is. And Jesus basically, you know, Jesus basically said here, none of these stones will be left standing. And as true as that was physically, because like I just said, that that second temple was also destroyed. This was also a spiritual matter. None of this, Jesus was letting them know, none of this matters. 
None of this is going to be here. You put all your faith, you put all your time, you, you swear by this temple and you worship this temple. And we even see some of the modern day Jews today. We see them do it today at the, at the welling wall. You know, they, they rock their heads back and forth on the, on the pieces of the temple that are left. And Jesus was basically letting them know, hey, this temple, don't idolize it. It's not going to be here always. He was also talking about himself. I'm not going to be here always. He was also talking about us. Guess what? Our temples here, the flesh you see, my very hand you see right now, all of this, it's not always going to be here. All of these things will be left upon one another that shall not be thrown down. Not one stone shall be left here. Not one stone. That means today, if Jesus were to walk through New York City, if we were all taking Jesus on a tour through New York City, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later, if we were taking him through, through downtown Chicago, if we were taking him through Los Angeles or San Francisco, Houston or Dallas, uh, whatever city you love to go to, I'm just naming some popular cities, Jesus would look and say, none of this matters. None of these things are going to be left here. You all are marveling over things that do not matter. Do not idolize, ladies and gentlemen. Don't idolize your city. Don't idolize the, the skyscrapers you see. Don't idolize penthouses. Don't idolize all of these uh, multi-million dollar apartments. Don't idolize any of those things. Know that it will all someday burn. And some may say, well, this is a negative teaching. No, this is a true prophetic teaching, maybe a deeper teaching. This is the truth that is being spoken. Jesus said, do you not see all these things assuredly? Meaning I guarantee you, I know 100% because I cannot lie. That is what Jesus is saying here. As assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Do we see the conflict? Each and every one of us know the conflict that is going on between Israel and Gaza right now. So many people are worked up. So many people are panicking. So many people are stressing. And it's sad what is going on in Israel right now. It's terrible. Today, I just read that over 40 babies have been beheaded. Gaza has beheaded over 40 babies from Israel. There's videos of them rejoicing. There's videos of them jumping up and down. There's videos of them uh, basically celebrating the fact that they've killed some of these Israelites. They've killed some of these innocent men and women and children and babies. And it's terrible. It's sad. But where are we at? So many people are wondering, where are we at in the times right now? What season are we in? Where are we at when it comes to Bible prophecy? And that is what we're going to talk about here tonight. So let's go to verse three, where it starts. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, because, you know, many of us today, including myself, you know, let's just be real here. We're curious. OK, when is when are these things going to take place? What is going to be the sign or the signs of Jesus, Jesus's return being imminent? When will the rapture happen? We know that he told us we don't know the day or the hour, but you see the disciples here were wondering, okay, but when are these things going to take place? Lord, you're telling us that this temple is going to no longer be here. You're telling us that this world is going to end, but what will be the sign? When are these things going to take place? Here's what Jesus said. Take heed that no one deceives you. Ladies and gentlemen, number one, when we see all of these things taking place in our world today, when we see these things taking place in the Middle East, when we see these things taking place between Israel and Gaza, when we see Iran possibly wanting to get involved, when we see uh, Pakistan possibly wanting to get involved, don't be deceived. Do not be deceived. He said, let him take heed that no one deceives you. Don't let the media deceive you. Don't let your party, your political party, whoever you identify with, which I hope many of you realize it does not matter. We are in a time where your political party, they will not save you. God is not going to ask you where you are a Democrat or were you, or were you a Republican. He's going to say, were you of me? Let no one deceive you. Why would Jesus say, take heed that no one deceives you? Because one sign of the end is there's going to be great deception. 
there's going to be great deception. And I think it's amazing how we have so much media that is out there. Everyone sharing different sides and different perspectives. And Jesus said, here, take, take heed that no one deceives you. My encouragement to you all tonight is to not be deceived. I pray that you are not deceived in these times. Let's keep going here. Verse five, for many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. Now, I know many of us say, well, Cameron, we know that if someone, if some man came and said that he's Jesus Christ, well, we know that's not true. Well, Cameron, we know that if someone said he is the Savior and he is the Messiah, well, we know that that's not true. But many will even come in his name saying that they are of him. And we see it today. There are many men, there are many women who come in his name today that are not of him. They are deceiving many. They just use Jesus as a marketing tool. So you want to know the signs of the end. You want to know the times that we are in. You need to be paying very close attention. Look at the many that come in his name, but are they truly his? Are they truly of him? Do they stand 10 toes down on the word of God? Is the word of God their foundation? A war doesn't have to break out. A pestilence, a virus, and none of that, and none of that has to break out. Jesus is giving you something here. Many will come in my name. Many will say that they are the Christ. Many will say that they are of me, but they are not. Do not allow them to deceive you. So do you want to know what time we are in? Do you want to know one sign? Jesus said, "There, let no one deceive you. I'm telling you all today, deception will be at an all-time high. We are seeing deception today. Look at AI. You can't even tell a, a real person almost from a computer now. It's getting to that point. Let no one deceive you. Verse six, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Isn't it funny? We hear of wars and rumors of wars today. We hear of the war between Russia and Ukraine. We hear of the war now between Israel and Gaza. We are hearing a rumor of a war uh, possibly getting ready to take place between China and Taiwan. And we're also hearing a rumor of the war possibly taking place in 2025 between the United States of America and China. We're hearing these wars and rumors of wars. And many are freaking out. Many are panicking. Many are saying, get your lives right with Christ now. I'm going to tell you every day you should get your life right with Christ. Every day you should be on your knees. Every day you should be repenting. Every day you should be seeking him. But notice what he says here, because we stop there. Many people stop there. Many people who may not read the Bible or many people who may hear a scripture and they stop there. They don't read the entire verse. They say, well, listen to all these wars. Look at all these wars. Look at these rumors of the wars. Look at the battle that's going on in Israel. If you go back to Genesis, you will see that this is an Ishmael versus Israel battle. This is still conflict between Ishmael and Israel. This is not a new conflict, ladies and gentlemen. This is nothing new. So notice here what Jesus said. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Jesus himself said, all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. He said this over 2,000 years ago. He said this over 2,000 years ago. How many wars? And I'm just asking you the question. I don't expect any exact numbers. But what I'm saying here is think about how many wars have taken place since then. Think about how many rumors of wars have taken place since then. Think about how many conflicts have taken place between Israel and other nations. Think about how many times even the United States has gone at war. Think about all of the persecution. Think about everything that has gone on throughout our nation. Over 2,000 years, we have heard of so many wars, so many rumors of wars. We've, we've went through World War I, World War II. Now, we're hearing Russia and Ukraine. Now we're hearing Israel and Gaza. We are hearing all of these things. And I see so many believers panicking and they're troubled. And Jesus said, see that you are not troubled. See that you are not troubled. Ladies and gentlemen, I ask you tonight, are you troubled? Are you troubled? Are you panicking? Are you worried? Because if it takes a war to get you to repent, if it takes a virus to get you to repent, 
if it takes all of these explosions and this possible war that's even going to happen here in the United States, if that's what it takes for you to repent, for you to get it right with Christ, I'm just going to be real. You're, pop, you're probably in trouble. Because how are you living when there is peace? How are you living when everything is well? Jesus said, see that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. The end is not yet. So when people say, oh, the world is going to end tomorrow. Oh, the Antichrist is coming on the scene. Oh, Jesus, oh, the trumpet is going to blow. Oh, Cameron, we need to get our lives right. Oh, Facebook, we need to get our lives right. Oh, I hope you're right. I pray that that is the message every day that the church is saying. Not only when Israel is at war, not only when Russia and Ukraine is at war, not only when China is threatening other nations. No, that needs to be our daily message. Repent, repent, repent. Give your life to Christ today. Seek him today. Because no man knows the day nor the hour. Jesus said, see that you are not troubled. If you are a mature Christian, if you are a mature follower of Christ, you will not be troubled by everything that is going on today. Does it mean you don't have concern? Does it mean you don't pray? Does it mean that it doesn't break your heart? It breaks my heart when I hear 40 innocent babies, four newborns, heads have been cut off. It breaks my heart to hear a grandmother was shot and killed in front of her grandson. It breaks my heart to hear that a mother had to shield her son while the Hamas group was shooting at her and killed her as she killed her son. It breaks my heart to hear that a four-year-old was on the phone while his stomach was bleeding out. And thank God that he was rescued when his phone was at 4% right before he died. It breaks my heart and it makes me angry. But ladies and gentlemen, I am not sitting here panicking saying, oh my gosh, if I don't get it right today and because of everything that is going on, then I'm going to miss the rapture. I'm going to miss the second return. No, 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 no. When you look at scripture, Jesus said, see that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Am I saying be chill? No. I warn every believer, you should be living basically on edge every day. You should be repenting every day. You should be looking to the sky every day. You should be saying, God, what is in my heart that shouldn't be there? What is in me that shouldn't be there? Lord, am I living your way? Lord, am I seeking you? Lord, am I living righteously? This should be a daily thing. Are you praying? Are you fasting? Are you seeking God? Or are some of you only reacting? Are some of you only emotional because you're troubled? by what you see going on in the Holy Land. Jesus said, see that you are not troubled for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Verse seven, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. We see that today. And there will be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in various places. We just all saw it. We know that there's famines did you know that actually the United States of America, look it up. I just told some of my friends this and they didn't believe me. Did you know there's a water drought in the United States of America? Because of some of the rivers and because of some of the ocean levels, they have declared that it is a water drought. Now, yes, you may have a water bottle in your home. Yes, you may have running water, but you cannot just totally look at the surface. You have to look deep. You have to look at the roots. Look, the United States of America has declared that it is possibly in a water drought. We hear of famines. We hear of pestilences. We all know that we just came through COVID. And there was something I actually even prophesied not too long ago. Actually, on September 6th of this year, I said there is something when I was praying, the Holy Spirit revealed to me, there is something coming over the horizon. And anyone who's, who was on the prayer line um, at 6 a.m. back in September, that I shared this word with them too. I shared with them that there is something coming over the horizon that is much greater much greater. And if you aren't standing on the word of God, you'll fall away. If you aren't standing on the word of God, if you don't believe in him, if you don't stand on him, if you don't truly believe in him, this pestilent, this thing that is coming over the horizon, it'll show who's real and who's fake. Jesus says that there will be famines and there will be pestilences. We see all of this today. And earthquake and, and earthquakes in various places. There was just an earthquake in Iraq, I believe, just this past 
uh, if it wasn't Saturday night or Sunday morning, there was just an earthquake, a 6.3 magnitude earthquake. Then they had an aftershock that was a 5.5 magnitude. So we see earthquakes in various places. We've heard of the earthquakes in California. We've heard of the wildfires breaking out all over the place and people are panicking, people are troubled. But look at what Jesus said here in verse eight. All these are the beginning of sorrows. All these are the beginning of sorrows. I tell you tonight, everyone on this prayer line and everyone tuning in via Facebook Live, we are in the beginning of sorrows. The labor pains are intensifying. The frequency of these things that are taking place are becoming more and more frequent. But the end is not yet here. This is why I, I teach so passionately. This is why I'm in, I am filled with the Holy Spirit. This is why I am passionate about telling people to repent, telling people to get their lives right, telling, telling people to, to come to Christ, telling people who know better, don't be lukewarm, don't be cold, don't fall away. No, no, it's not because of the end, but it's because your tomorrow was never promised. My tomorrow was never promised. So it may not be the end of the world, but what if, what if it's close to the end of your life? What if tomorrow you are to see Jesus? What if tomorrow I am to come before the throne of God? You don't know when your last, last day is on this earth, so you should live every day as such. And I'm not talking about doing whatever you want, partying however you want, drinking however you want. I'm talking about you should live every day. Holiness. Lord, is this pleasing to you? Lord, is my life pleasing to you? We are only in the beginning of sorrows. And I, I know many people may not like to hear this, and I know um, it may not be popular to say, but people will say, well, things get better. Will things get better? Well, as we get closer to the end of the age and as the earth, as, as, the, as the return of Jesus gets closer and closer, things will actually only get worse. Read your Bible. It tells you things will actually only get worse before they get better. All of these things, I mean, when you read the book of Revelation, you see that you have seven trumpets, you have seven bowls, you have these judgments that are taking place, these wraths of God that are taking place all before the millennium happens. It is only going to get worse. And I'm telling you right now, we are only in the beginning of sorrows. And if you fall away right now, you're not ready for what's to come. If you're wavering, if you're panicking, if you're head over heels, if you're losing your mind over the things that are taking place today, over the war that is taking place, I challenge you today to really get in your word, to really pray. If it's your first time joining us on Facebook Live or even on this prayer line, I encourage you to continue to join us because we are in times where you do not want to be messing around. We are in times where if voices, if whoever you're listening to, whatever man of God, whatever woman of God, whoever you listen to, whatever church you attend, they aren't warning you, if they aren't preparing you, if they aren't sharing this with you, you may very well be in trouble. We are only in the beginning of sorrows. Look at Matthew 24, verse nine. Then, so Jesus tells us we're in the beginning of sorrows, but look at what's gonna happen next, ladies and gentlemen. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. I'm gonna share with you all what I just learned tonight. The New York City mayor, Mayor Adams, New York City is uh, on a high alert right now because of everything that has went on and the, everything that is going on in Israel between Israel and Gaza. Um, and New York, the mayor of New York City has put them on high alert because they believe that they are now at a place where a terrorist attack could happen from within the city. I say this because there are videos that are now surfacing, and you can look it up online, of Islamic groups who identify with the Hamas group who is currently at war with Israel. They are now wanting people to come to their God, their false God. And as you see, if they are doing it, if, if the Hamas group is acting out in Israel in this manner, and they're murdering innocent babies, and they're murdering mothers and grandmothers, and they're doing these things, what makes you think they won't do it for at least those who may be part of the group? What makes you think they won't do it over here? 
He said, then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. You won't be hated because of the church you go to. You won't be hated because of your title. You won't be hated because of your money. You won't be hated. You won't be delivered up to tribulation. You won't be murdered because of any materialistic thing or anything you may have done in the past. No, 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 no. You're going to be persecuted and you're going to be delivered up to tri tribulation for the name of Jesus. That is true persecution for the name of Jesus. So he tells you this is what's going to take place after the beginning of sorrows begin, after the sorrows begin. Then he goes on to say in verse 10, and then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. But what does this mean, Cameron? What does this mean, church? What does this mean, brothers and sisters? This means that some of the people you sit next to every day in church, some of the people you pray with, some of the people you're on this cross prayer line with, some of the people you're on Facebook with, this means that those who identify with Christ today, somebody is going to say something that's going to offend them. I'm probably offending somebody right now. This means that they're going to betray their other brothers and sisters who are living a life, a narrow life. They're living narrowly. They're on that narrow road. And you will have people who say, oh, it's okay. You can do this. You can do that. We have plenty of time. We have this. We have that camera set. It's just the beginning of sorrows and there's no conviction when you choose to follow Jesus, when you choose to worship him, when you choose to be in your word, when you choose to truly follow the way, the truth and the life, and you choose to stay on that narrow road, there will be people who will be offended and then they will betray you and they will hate you. So what's going to happen? What's going to happen next? Then we see these wars. We hear of these nations rising against nations and kingdom against kingdoms. But what's going to happen? Ladies and gentlemen, there's going to be a great falling away. It's all in the Bible. This is all Jesus himself said this. There's going to be a great falling away. There are going to be people who are going to betray one another. There are going to be both small and large churches who are going to see many people fall away. We thought COVID, we thought people, we thought COVID pushed people away. What's to come next? More will fall away. You will see who is real and who is fake, who is true. And who was false, who was superficial, but who was deeply rooted. That's what we're getting ready to see. Jesus prophesied all of this. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. This is why I'm saying pay close attention who you listen to. Pay close attention to what you're looking at on Facebook. Every word that is given is not true. Every word that is given is not of God. Seek the Holy Spirit to see, hey, is this word of you? Seek the word of God to even see if what somebody said aligns with the word. We just go by so much. Oh, well, because this person said it, I believe it. Go back to the word. Be like the church of Ephesus. They went to the word. Is what's being said real? Is this true? Jesus said many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And I guarantee you there will be many false prophets who will prophesy peace and peace and peace and declare peace and peace and peace and wealth and wealth and wealth and all of these things when Jesus is saying here no there's going to actually be some trouble that the church is going to go through there's going to be some trials and tribulation that the church is going to go through they're in the beginning of sorrows verse 12 and because lawlessness will abound the love of many will grow cold don't we see the lawlessness today I know it's not just me. I know each and every person listening today. I know you all see the lawlessness that is arising in our nation. We have young people over here, young people my age and even younger than me. I'm 26 years old and I'm looking at some people who are my age and some people who are younger doing lawless things. I mean, theft is at an all time high. The murder rate is increasing. There's no respect. There's no honor. Lawlessness is, 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 is growing. Lawlessness is abounding. And Jesus said it will abound. And as a result, the love of many will grow cold. We see many people today, they don't have love in their hearts. We see even many people in church, many Christians, they don't have that first love that Jesus talked about in Revelation. This is all a sign of what, of the times we are entering and even of the times that we are in. Pay close attention. Jesus is giving you the whole package here. He said, verse 13, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. I pray that each and every one of you endures to the end. 
I pray that each and every one of you stay on fire for Christ. I pray that each and every one of you listening to my voice today, you take heed to these warnings. You take heed to what's being said in the news, what's going on around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to share this with you. What manifests in the physical is already manifested in the spiritual. We see the war taking place between Russia and Ukraine. Guess what? There was already a war that broke out spiritually before it manifested physically. We see the war taking place between Israel and Gaza. Well, before that took place physically, there was already a war. There was already a spiritual battle going place. Satan is raging over the land of Israel. He has been since the beginning of time, since God declared it his holy land. Satan wants it. We hear of things possibly getting ready to take place in New York City, possibly getting ready to take place in our very own nation, in our very own land. But before it manifests physically, it's going to take place spiritually. Pay close attention to the signs. Stay in your word. Fast. Pray. Repent. Seek him. Because if you don't, you won't endure. If you don't, you won't be saved. If you don't, you will fall away. Verse 14, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, <laughs> and then the end will come. The gospel of the kingdom must be preached in all the world, in every nation, to every tribe, in every tongue. Jesus says, when that happens, then the end will come. So am I saying we're not at the end 100%? No. I do believe in my heart spiritually that we are at the beginning of sorrows. We are still in that period of beginning of sorrows. There are many nations that still need to hear the gospel. There are many tribes and tongues that still need to hear the, the gospel. Um, while many have heard more today than any other period in time, yes. But we need to pay close attention. Hey, the gospel still needs to be teached. There are souls that still need to be saved. We cannot stop evangelizing because of everything that has taken place. This is a time where evangelism should be at an all-time high because of everything that is going on. Jesus said it, when the gospel is being preached to all nations and, 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 and we are witnessing to all, then the end will come. Aren't you grateful that we serve a, a patient God? Last couple of verses here, and we'll be done here. Verses 36 through 44. We're gonna jump to verses 36 through 44. Jesus said, because some, you know, I'm going to say this before I read the scripture. Some people are trying to predict when the return of Christ will be. Some people are trying, trying to say, oh, it's going to happen in this year. I've heard things. Some people say 2028. I've heard 2030. Leave that alone. Jesus said, but of that day and hour, no one knows. Not even the angels of heaven, but my father only. I'm giving you Bible here tonight, y'all. I'm telling you the truth. Nobody, not your mama, not your grandmama, not your pastor, not me. I don't care if there's a prophet you've been following for years, an evangelist, a teacher, whoever, an apostle. Nobody but God Almighty knows the day and the hour of when the coming of the Lord will come, when he will come, when Jesus will return again, when the rapture will take place. Nobody knows. We can't predict the A, we can't predict the day, we can't predict the hour. Jesus even said, hey, it's none of our business to even know the time or the season. Did you know that in Acts 1, 7, he said, it is none, and let me read it for you exactly here. Acts 1, 7 says, it is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. Truly, y'all, truly, only God knows the day and the hour. Only him. The angels don't. The disciples didn't. I don't. Pastor Ponder doesn't. And none of you on this call or on Facebook Live don't. Nobody. Jesus said, but of that day and hour, no one knows. But as so, so but, but pay attention here. How, how do we know things are? How do we see the intensity? How do we know it's coming? How do we know it's closer? Because if, if, if you're in tune, you'll sense, okay, we are getting close to that point. Jesus said, verse 37, basically just pay attention to the times. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the son of man be. So how were the days of Noah? He tells us in verse 38. For as in the days before the flood, before the flood, before God wiped out, before God um, basically wiped out those who were sinning, those who rejected him, those who were cold, whose hearts were cold towards him. 
They were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the son of man be. So also will the coming of the son of man be. What does this mean? People will continue to be lollygagging, doodly doing doing whatever they want, going wherever they go, saying whatever they want to say, living however they want to live, because what are they saying today? We hear it today. Oh, they've been saying it for years. Peter told us. People will say, oh, y'all been talking about it for thousands and thousands of years, and Jesus still ain't came yet. We ain't paying no attention to it. It's going to be just like that, and we hear it today. And look at everything that is taking place. We are seeing prophecies un unfolding before our very own eyes. But does this mean you should be troubled? Does this mean you should be panicking? If you live and right for Christ, no. If anything, we should be like Paul. We're looking forward to the, to the return of our Lord and Savior. I'm looking forward to Jesus rapturing us up. I'm looking forward to Jesus coming out of those, coming in those clouds with all of his angels surrounding him. I'm looking forward to being in eternity with our Lord and Savior. Some of you are troubled. Some of you are panicking. I'm telling you, breathe. Be vigilant. Breathe. Be vigilant. Breathe. Pay close attention. Don't just be going about every day like, oh, we got another 100 years. We got another 50 years. We got another 10 years. We got another 10 days. Live every day as if Christ was coming today. Live every day as if Christ was coming tomorrow. Live every day. It shouldn't just spark a war. It shouldn't spark somebody being killed. It, it, it shouldn't take that for you to have that conviction, for you to be that on fire for God. Live every day. Do you love him? Do you want a relationship with him? Do you want to be in eternity with him? And you will live with him. You will live for him every day. Verse 40, then, the, then two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. Watch, therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. Watch, therefore, meaning pay attention. Be vigilant. Don't just say, oh, I can, I can relax here. Oh, I, I can do this. Oh, I can chill and everything. Yeah, I'm saying breathe, but I'm also telling you be vigilant. I just don't want you to be troubled, as Jesus said. Don't be troubled. These things were already prophesied. Guess what? We're going to keep on praying. We're going to keep on evangelizing. We're going to keep on doing what we're doing. We're not going to do as the world does. We're not going to live as the world lives. We're going to live for Christ. We're going to live as children of God. Jesus said, watch. So are you watching? Are you watching? Are you watching? For you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. I can end that teaching right there because so many people... I had a high expectation of Jesus to come tomorrow. They're at a high expectation of him to come this month. They're at a high expectation of him to come in this time of war between Israel and, and Gaza and between Russia and Ukraine and possibly these terrorist attacks are getting ready to take place. But Jesus said he's not coming he, or the hour he is coming is an hour that we will not expect. You know what that tells me when everything seems to be going good, when there's peace. When it seems to be quiet, when people think, oh, we all good, we can get back to the regular way of things again, and then boom, it happens. So I tell you this more, I tell you this evening, watch, pay attention. And like Jesus said, do not be troubled. Don't be troubled. Yes, we need to pray. We just pray, um, like I said yesterday, for a whole hour for Israel. Pray fast, seek him. But don't be troubled. Don't be troubled. If you are mature in Christ and if you are truly in your word, you say, well, all of this was prophesied. This has been going on since Genesis. This is a, a battle between Ishmael and Israel. This ain't nothing new. Is it sad? Absolutely. This ain't nothing new. This is nothing new. Nothing new. Nothing new. So I pray that we.